demonic spirit whilst you go on outreach. And that's why you are two or three. That's why I don't go alone so that you don't get overwhelmed. But when you are two, if you are getting lost, the other one will not get lost. If you are weak, the other one will be strong. And that's why, but we are going with the authority in the name of Jesus. It says, it says, cast out demons. And we can cast out demons. And you can cast out demons. Amen. Freely, you received. Freely, give. Freely, you receive. Freely, give. When we go on outreach, we're not saying go and market the church. We're not saying go and market the church. We're not saying go and market the pastor or go and market, you know, um, we've got the best musicians, we've got the best choir, come and join us, come and enjoy your time in our church. We're not saying that. Because you are establishing a transaction there. But freely, freely you received. That means that freely you received the word of salvation. Freely you received the gift of God. Freely were you saved by grace. And so, this same knowledge that you receive, you also give it freely. You also give it freely. They freely give. Freely give. Give your time to someone you will meet who has a need of salvation. In some cases, some may even have a need of clothing. Yes, you may say, is that what you need? Let me have your contact. I will send you some clothes. It can happen like that. What you are doing is expressing the loving kindness of God, the mercy of God. That's why Jesus says to them, he said, he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. For they shall receive mercy. So freely give, because you also, you receive freely. And that includes both the knowledge of the word of God, both the gift that you have, you know, and the things of life and godliness. Verse 9, Matthew chapter 10, verse 9. I'm talking about going out as a church. It says, do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts or a bag for your journey or even two coats or sandals or a staff. For the worker is worthy of his support. Now, they do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your belt, or for your money belt. We are not asking you to go to reach out to people because we need in the church. We are not saying that. We are not saying go out and tell people about Lord Jesus Christ. We don't receive offering. We're not there going out because we want to increase our financial base or increase our offering size. No. But we are going there with the message of the Lord. With the message of the Lord. Amen. And he also says to them so that they can avoid distraction on the field of evangelism. To avoid distraction. Yes, we are calling in people into Christ. We are not, you know, uh, trying to get them into some kind of transaction. We are not trying to say that. And so we are saying Jesus loved them. We are saying that God wants to establish his throne in our community. 
Because when the kingdom of God is established in the community, we will see peace. There will be less violence. Homicide will not be heard in our community. Murder will not be heard in our community. Disgruntled children, you know, destabilized youth will not be seen in our community. And taking the church to the community is a way for us, you know, to bring stability into the community. To bring stability. So he said, do not acquire gold or silver or copper for yourself, for your money belts. So going out there is not for transaction. It's for relationship with Christ Jesus. And he says, for the worker is worthy of his support. For the worker is worthy of his support. And we, we you know, this, this has been interpreted in several ways. Though we are going as a church, not you know, not like in, in the in the in the core of going to you know uh, do a, a, a normal church set up somewhere to uh, you know to establish something in the next community there. Or no, we're just reaching out and going to homes. So because here, because Jesus said, "Do not take any money built for yourself and all that." He said, "For the worker is worthy." Of his support. He's talking about those who work for the kingdom of God, not those who are in job positions. He's talking about those who work for the kingdom of God, those who labor for the kingdom of God, those who gave their time for the kingdom of God. Those who gave their time for the kingdom of God, God knows how to reach out to them. God knows how to reach out to them. He knows that we are out there. He knows we are here this morning. He knows that the worker is worthy of his support. And whatever city, verse 11 says, whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it and stay at his house until you leave that city. That is in situations whereby you are not able to, you know, to, to live where you, you've gone to minister or constraint of accommodation, constraint, or maybe it becomes late. These are for some other ministry dimensions. It's for other ministry dimensions because you may, you may be asked to go to, for example, the village in Nipumalanga and you are to go and reach out for Christ there. And then even a hotel you cannot afford to. But God is saying for a worker is worthy of his support. God knows how to, to package a relief, to package and put together, help us. So that is different to, to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about we as a church going out there to just minister to people about Christ. But he's saying whatever city Stay at his house, whether who is worthy. You know, so that is a, a different dimension. And it says, as you enter the house, give it your greeting. And if the house is worthy, give it your blessing of peace. Give it your blessing of peace. The house that is worthy. A house who receives you, an individual who receives you and say, I want to hear the word of God. A home, a father of the house, a mother of the house will receive you and say, oh, pray for us in this house. You know, if they deserve that you leave your blessings of my, or, or prayer or blessing with them. It requires so. And this is relevant to what we are saying, what we are talking about this morning. And he says, he says, but if it is not worthy, if it is not worthy, take back your blessing of peace. Take back your blessings of peace. If it's not worthy. Because you might come across some people that may invite you to their compound or to their lounge. They invite you to argue the scripture with you. While you are doing evangelism or outreach. They might invite you to argue the scripture with you. They are not worthy to stay with. 
You don't go to, to argue scripture when you go on outreach. You don't go to argue scripture. There are maybe unworthy people like that. So we need to be careful. We take back our blessing of peace. Verse 14 says, Whoever does not receive you, nor heed your word, as you go out of that house or that city, shake the dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. Amen. You, know, you, 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 you have to shake the dust off. You have to make sure that you cleanse your mind of wrong experience at that location. You have to forgive whatever may be said to you that is, that is you know, wrong because you are preaching the gospel and then some insulted you. They shake your feet, shake the dust off your feet. It's just for you to forget it and, you know, remove it from your mind and move on. Hallelujah. Let's shake the dust off your feet. So instead of you talking back, because you can be, you can be short-tempered, and then you are preaching the gospel, and somebody just says certain things to you that you cannot stand. I'm warning you right now, you need to be on guard. You need to be on guard. And we have to be careful and be in control. Let the Holy Spirit be at work in you. And we give you the spirit of control. You know? But shake the dust off your feet. Anyway. So, lastly, verse 15 says, Truly I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Than for that city. For that individual who turn away from the message of the kingdom of God. From that family who will turn you back from their gates. You know, or somebody I've seen in a situation where I've been on the street sharing pamphlet and you give a pamphlet to somebody before they walk away one meter, they already turn it and throw it aside. In fact, have you been seen a situation whereby you, you share a track or you give somebody a pamphlet along the road, and when you are coming back, the very pamphlet you gave to someone, you will see it on the floor. You will see it on the floor. What can you do? There's nothing you can do. You've done your own part. But Jesus himself says, truly, I say to you, it will be tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And so, this are the directions we can see in the gospel when Christ sent them out and gave them authority. He gave them authority over every situation they may come across. Either a dead situation, demonic situation, sick situation, jobless situation, destabilized family, he has given us the authority. And so as we are prepared to, you know, take the church beyond the walls of this building. Let us go with a message. Let us go with the testimonies of our life. The testimonies of our life is a witness. It's a message for those you may encounter as you go to reach out to all the people. And again, I mentioned from this, that yes, Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 1 he said unto them that they should go into the they should not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of Samaritans but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and I mentioned that the lost sheep of the house of Israel represent those who have left the church. Those who are born again, spirit-filled and tongue-speaking, but because of offense, they left the church. 
you may come across them whilst you go on a outreach. You may come across them. And when you come across them, don't become them. When you come across them, don't sit there, don't sit there and be talking about what is going on in the church. No, we are not sending you to tell them what is going on in the church. We are sending you to tell them about Jesus Christ. Because there are so many like that. And I want to tell you that, you know, uh, the crown of this exercise is readily waiting for you. In the name of Jesus. So let us um, appreciate who we are in Christ Jesus as a church and as a time that we take on this message to the community. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, you know, when you read also from the context of, of Luke, Luke also wrote about, you know, the, 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 the outreach of the 70 in Luke chapter 10. And when they went out, they, 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 they came with so much of results. And they were happy by what they see. They were happy by what they see. Let's look at, as I close on this, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 17. It says, The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Is that even the demons are subject to us in your name? So many things happened. They saw the result. They saw the result of, of, of the, 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 the journey or, or, or the outreach they went to. God, demons were bowing. Demons were crying. So you may enter a place or encounter somebody that you assume to be demonized or a demonic situation. And the Holy Spirit can steer you up to offer a prayer. And you will see result. You will see result. You will see a change. Somebody calling you or seeing you the next day and say, Oh, thank you for coming into our house. My sister was demonic, spirit filled, was sick, and your prayer, she became well. And so when this result came and Jesus said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. He said, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirit are subject to you but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. That your names are recorded in heaven. The crown is waiting for you for every work you partake for the kingdom of God. For every field that you tread to call people to Christ and to express the, the, the love of God to them. So your names are recorded in heaven. At that very time, verse 21, at that very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit. And said, I praise you, O Lord, of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone whom the Son wills to reveal Him. And so, we are going in the company of the Holy Spirit. We are going in the company of the Spirit. The authority that Jesus has granted unto us to decree and to declare to bind and to loose. We're going in that authority. And this must be your belief. This must be your belief. And recognize that it is the Spirit of God which is at work. It is a privilege for you to, to be on the work field for God. What you say to a person or a family can save a generation. 
when you, when, you, when you give them the news about the love of God can save a marriage because you might step in into a stormy marriage situation while you are on outreach. And so these are the work of the Holy Spirit and we, we submit ourselves to it in the name of Jesus. So let us go out there from next week for us to reach out to our community and express the love of God unto every man. And where we need to pray, we pray. And we will see the, the hand of God manifesting and God working through you. As God walk in you, God walk through you. And I pray that God will walk through you. As he has been walking in you, you will manifest that glory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a clap of him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to pray and prepare ourselves for this church beyond the walls. We need to pray for confidence. We need to pray for boldness. Do not feel condemned when you are to minister to someone or to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. You remember, you are still a work in progress. You are still a work in progress. Amen. It's better to be in a work in progress than being nothing. And you going out there to share the word of God, to tell people that God loves them, you are fulfilling the work of ministry in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray this morning, the Lord, that you grant us the boldness by the power of the Holy Ghost. We pray, mighty God, that your hand be laid upon each and every one to be strong, to be bold, to share your word in the name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God, that for there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Father, therefore, Lord God, we go out there to minister to people, to, re to reach out to the, those who are lost, those who are despondent in the name of Jesus. No spirit of condemnation will befall us in the name of Jesus. No criticism of the church will befall us in the name of Jesus. We pray for boldness. We pray for stability in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Paul wrote to Timothy and said to him, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in, the, is in Christ Jesus. He said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He said, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust this to faithful men. We will be able to teach others also in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray this morning, every word we have received, the blessings we have received, the healing we have received, the favor we have received. Father, we pray, Lord God, as we go out, let it manifest through us, manifest to other families, manifest to other individuals who have not known Christ. Lord, through our witnesses, they shall come to know Christ. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for boldness, even to speak to our neighbors where we live. We do not know where we church, but Lord, they have not known you, but in this moment, Father, grant us the boldness to speak to our neighbors, to speak to our work colleagues that have not even heard about Christ. Lord, we ask that your Holy Ghost empower us in this month of outreach, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Go ahead of us and perfect every path we shall go through in reaching out to our community, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. That's the way the Lord wants it to go. And I thank the Lord for that direction. And then um, other time we shall be finishing other series that we are in. Amen. God bless you. Give Jesus a clap of faith again. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, all our announcement uh, was said, and uh, looking at the events of this morning, as a couple of months ago, uh, when this lockdown started, I I gave a pronouncement, an important uh, need of the church. That was last year, and we begin to see, and uh, whereby you know I announced the need of the church. Generator was one of those need in the budget. Generator, the media system was one of those need. The, the 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 equipment for media is one of those needs, and more importantly now is this generator because of the lockdown. And I believe we estimated 125,000 rent, which was announced for three months, but nobody responded. And so we need to see that the need is appearing to us. The need is appearing to us. As a church, we do not place, you know, uh, pressure on people. But whoever takes the pressure on himself to answer the need of the kingdom of God, God always give them the peace. God always honor the desires of their heart. You see, when the Bible says that it grants the desires of our heart, it's not particularly what we need for ourselves. 